Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to uh, another town hall meeting. And uh, as you know, there's an important election coming up on November 6th. And uh, um, we're committed to support and uh, the public policy. And uh, so we thought this was a great opportunity to have uh, Josh Mandel come and speak. He wanted to learn a little bit about Smith, Smith Medical and give you guys an opportunity to ask some questions and, and offer some answers. Uh, give you a little background on, uh, on Josh. He's currently the 48th treasurer of the state of Ohio. Uh, prior to becoming state treasurer, he served two terms as state representative from 2006 to 2010 uh, from the 17th Ohio House District. Two, 2003, he was elected Lyndhurst City Councilman, Marine Corps veteran, veteran who served uh, two tours in Iraq. Um, Josh would like to tell you a little about himself, and he's uh, currently the treasurer of the uh, state of Ohio and running for uh, a Senate seat. So he'll give you a little. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. All right, appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me here uh, this afternoon. Uh, as state treasurer, I uh, travel the state uh, quite a bit. You know, I get to know a lot of uh, folks in a variety of uh, public offices as well. You know, meet folks who are mayors and uh, state representatives. And, you know, a lot of these folks, they, they have a variety of goals. You know, some of them, by the uh, time they're age 40, want to be United States congressman or by the time they're 50, want to be governor, or by the time they're 60, want to be United States senator. Uh, I tried to keep my goals relatively simple. Uh, by the time I'm 35, uh, I just hope to be shaving. <laughs> I heard people whispering, like, how old is this guy? So, For those of you wondering, I'm uh, 34 years old, born and raised in uh, Northeast Ohio. Uh, my wife and I live about five minutes from where we grew up, and uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to spend the rest of our life in the state of Ohio. Uh, I am a product not only of the United States Marine Corps, but also of the Ohio State University. Uh, spent uh, four years uh, at Ohio State, uh, and uh, you know my time there, uh, as well as uh, my time in the Marine Corps and uh, trying to serve the community in this respect, have uh, helped shape me uh, as a man and as a leader. Um, I was inspired into all this by my grandparents. Uh, one of my grandfathers uh, came over uh, from Italy uh, right before Christmas Day, 1949, I believe, and uh, got a job not too uh, uh, long after that at a brass factory. And uh, he worked as a union laborer uh, at a brass, brass factory for over uh, 30 years. Uh, my grandmother was a union laborer, worked uh, for over 25 years as a clerk at a drugstore. Uh, my other grandfather was a U.S. Army Air Corps vet. Uh, they didn't really have two pennies to rub together, uh, but they were good, hardworking people, and they appreciated uh, you know, the opportunities we have in this country, and they instilled in me an appreciation for it and a duty to not only give back to community and country, but also pay it forward. Uh, and it was uh, my grandparents really inspired me to join the Marines and also uh, serve in public service in this respect as well. Uh, in 2006, ran for the state legislature. Uh, a lot of folks in my neck of the woods said it was uh, not possible for me to get elected because the district I was running in was two to one Democrat to Republican. Uh, I'm a Republican and had twice as many Democrats as Republicans. And uh, oftentimes when people say uh, to me, hey, you're too young, kid, wait your turn, or this is impossible because of ABC, XYZ, uh, it sort of motivates me to want to do it even more so and do it the right way and do the next right thing. And so we went out there in 2006 and knocked on approximately uh, 19,679 doors, approximately. Uh, wore, out three, wore out three pairs of shoes, and in this district that was two to one Democrat to Republican, was able to get elected with a good mix of Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Uh, and you know, if, if you forget everything I say today, uh, remember this one thing. Uh, I think one of the main problems that we have about 20 minutes from here at the State House and one of the main problems we have in Washington uh, is that there's uh, too many politicians who care more about the D or the R next to their name than they do about doing the right thing. Uh, and I want you to know that I don't care what the Republican political bosses have to say, and I don't care what the Democratic political bosses have to say. Um, my boss is 11.5 million people throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, you're my boss. And I try to make decisions uh, based on what I think is best for the people of our state. I uh, spent four years doing that as a legislator and uh, now do it as state treasurer. Uh, when I came into the treasurer's office, uh, it was uh, <coughs> the office uh, in a lot of people's uh, eyes was a little of a mess. 
uh, both uh, ethically and, uh, and fiscally. And I'm proud to report to you as my bosses that we cleaned it up. Uh, while the U.S. credit rating was downgraded for the first time in American history by Standard & Poor's and 14 local, government, uh, local and state government funds around the country were downgraded, we earned the highest rating we can earn, a AAA rating from S&P on the multi-billion dollar investment fund we manage there. Uh, we earned from Fitch as they uh, downgraded the outlook of the United States to negative. We earned from Fitch the highest rating we can earn uh, on some of the bonds we manage uh, in the office. Our liquidity portfolio is up about $2 billion since the day uh, we took office, and we navigated the European sovereign debt crisis, not only without a loss, but actually with a yield on behalf of taxpayers. Uh, and we are running one of the most effective, efficient state treasure offices in America. And that story from 20 minutes from here in Columbus uh, contrasts in a very stark fashion with the unfortunate mess in Washington, D.C. Uh, I am frustrated uh, uh, with both uh, Republican and Democratic leaders in Washington, and uh, I think uh, a lot of them have failed us. Uh, and in my mind, the only way to change Washington is to change the people we send there. I'm going to say that again. If we want to change Washington, we have to change the people we send there. We cannot keep sending the same people there and all of a sudden expect different results. And as I travel the state talking to people of all races, religions, political affiliations, what I keep hearing over and over again is we need a new generation of leaders in Washington. Folks who look a little different, sound a little different, think a little differently, and have the backbone and the guts to stand up to political bosses on both sides of the aisle and stand up to very powerful money interests and lobbyists. Uh, when necessary to do the right thing uh, for our state and our country. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm running against a guy named Sherrod Brown, uh, who I don't know too well. I've only met him uh, on a handful of occasions, um, and I can tell you my observations from, uh, from meeting him. Uh, one thing I've observed is uh, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Um, his wife's a nice person. They're, you know, they, they're not bad people, okay? Um, secondly, I think he loves his country. Just because I served in the Marine Corps and did, did a couple tours in Iraq doesn't mean that I love my country any more than he loves his country. We just have different visions for where we want to take it. Uh, and the third observation is he's been running for political office since Richard Nixon was president. 38 years. He's been in Washington for two decades and he's part of the problem. Your jobs, in large part, depend on a good environment for manufacturing <coughs> and a good environment specifically for making medical devices throughout our state and throughout our country. Uh, I wanna talk specifically about manufacturing and specifically about medical devices, and I'll be glad to open up to any questions you may have. Uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, the uh, you know, Health Care Act that was passed, uh, in the, uh, uh, you know, that was passed a couple of years ago, uh, included in it a tax specifically on medical devices. This tax will be a job killer for companies like yours, for employers like yours, for Smith Medical, and also Cardinal Health right here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the Columbus Dispatch you might have seen probably a month or two ago did a story specifically uh, on this uh, medical device tax and how it will impact jobs at companies like Cardinal Health like Smith Medical, like um, Steris and Invacare also in Northeast Ohio. We have this great tradition of manufacturing in the state and specifically have a great tradition, tradition of manufacturing uh, medical devices. And one of the main reasons why I fundamentally and strongly disagreed with this legislation, which in my mind is the federal government taking over our healthcare system, was because it specifically targeted the medical device industry. It specifically said, we're gonna add a new tax on medical devices which in my mind is a tax on innovation. It's a tax on new jobs. It's a tax on creative people, hardworking manufacturers like yourself throughout Central Ohio and throughout the state. It's one of the main reasons why I respectfully and forcefully uh, disagree with the federal government's taking over our healthcare system with that piece of legislation. Uh, a second problem with it is uh, who knows better about our healthcare for ourselves and our families? We as patients, our physicians, or a faceless bureaucrat in Washington, D.C.? In my mind, the answer is simple. Those decisions about our health care, about our family's health care, should be made between us and our physicians, 
without a faceless bureaucrat in Washington standing in the doctor's office with us. A third reason why I respectfully and fundamentally disagree with that piece of legislation uh, is because of the enormous burden it will put on the state of Ohio. We're already struggling as a state. And you see our public schools struggling to make ends meet. You see a lot of police departments and fire departments struggling to make ends meet. The added burden on the Medicaid system we'll feel here in the state of Ohio will have a negative ripple effect throughout the state. We will all feel it. Whether or not you, you're on Medicaid, we will all feel it. Because the reverberating effect it'll have on our budget will impact our schools, will impact our colleges and universities, will impact uh, our police departments and fire departments and the ability to provide important services for families and citizens. Uh, as mentioned in the introduction, I was a city councilman for a while and I understand how local government works and uh, a lot of this stuff just gets passed down and so when there's added costs at the state level, it ultimately gets passed down, uh, unfortunately, to the local level and we just can't afford that here in the state of Ohio. In order to pass this legislation and make it law, they needed 60 votes. So if any one senator that voted for it had the guts, integrity, courage to stand up to their own party and say, no, this isn't right for the state of Ohio, this isn't right for my state, that one senator held in their hands the power to stop it from going through, to stop that medical device tax that will impact your businesses, that will impact your jobs, to stop the entire legislation that will impact small business jobs throughout our state. Our Senator, Sherrod Brown, had the opportunity to stand up. He could have had the courage to stand up to his own party and say, you know what, I'm going to stop this medical device tax. I'm going to stop this burden on small businesses. But instead, he cast the deciding vote on the federal government's takeover of health care. People ask the question, how is it the deciding vote? But for his vote, it would not have passed. If Sherrod Brown would have had the courage to stand up to his own party, it wouldn't have passed. I'll tell you something. When I go to Washington, I will have the courage to stand up to my own party. I will have the courage to stand up to the other party. I will have the courage to stand up to lobbyists. I will have the courage to stand up to very powerful moneyed interests. This is one small way, one small part of my being a leader in Washington where I think my Marine Corps service will come in handy. Because the backbone that was instilled in me in the Marine Corps and the grittiness that was instilled in me by my grandparents gives me courage. And the day that some Republican political boss with gray hair who's been there for 40 years puts his hand on my shoulder and says, listen, son, you better vote for this legislation or else I'm going to kick you off your committee. Listen, son, you better vote for this legislation or else we're going to shut off your fundraising. Some lobbyist comes up to me and says, son, you better vote for this legislation or else we're going to embarrass you in the media. I will look that lobbyist, I will look that Republican political boss in the eye and tell them, I don't work for you. My boss is 11.5 million people back in the state of Ohio. You can't push me around. I've been through tougher stuff than this. I want to finish up uh, by telling you uh, that I appreciate what you do every day. Uh, I think manufacturing, agriculture, small business, those are three of the core components to our economy here in the state of Ohio. And so what you're doing here every day, making parts and making devices that save lives throughout the world, it's the backbone of our economy. Uh, I don't know how much you get thanked by public officials for what you do, uh, but I believe long term if we're going to stay strong as a country, we've got to make things in this country. We need to make things. We can't just be a service economy. And so what you're doing every day by making things, by making goods, I believe, is keeping our country strong far into the future. And for that, I'm very grateful, and I hope to make you proud. Thank you.